Hello again and uh, welcome back to another one of my uh, videos um, with Creative Being. This is me, Ellie Adjusnel Masri, and uh, I'm trying this time, as I did in my last video, to uh, focus a bit more on, on the actual artwork itself so you don't see so much of me in this shot, which is probably just as well because it's a pr pretty hot day here in Wales today. It's amazing, but uh, uh, you don't get to see me perspiring. You get to see, um, hopefully, something nice emerging on the paper. and. Uh, uh, in this uh, another watercolour video today, I'm going to be um, developing a uh, painting I started yesterday actually with this beautiful brown red daylily, uh, Hemerocallis, and uh, it's so beautiful in the border here that I just really adore the shapes and I wanted to maybe, well, I should just make a, a really detailed study of it which I might take on into um, a design for something um, or develop into a print for something else. So um, I've come outside and we're using some watercolour paper. It's the 300 gram um, hot press paper I'm using today. I've got my uh, some paint set up here and a small arrangement and I'm going to put out some browns here. I've got some um, burnt umbers. It's a really interesting um, flower to paint because as the light changed yesterday the colours changed quite radically on the flower itself and there's you know when you're painting outside you get all kinds of other factors coming into play that you need to consider um, because there's less control than there would be in the studio. So I put out some burnt umber. I'm also using some burnt sienna, which is a gorgeous rusty brown. It's very rich, which I, I love to use so much, but I'm looking quite closely at that color. I'm also going to use a blue again today to help me create the darker areas uh, in the flower petals, which I mentioned in the uh, previous uh, video about clouds. Um, thank you very much for all the feedback and comments by the way. I'm going to try doing a few more close-up uh, videos so that you can see what I'm actually working on. Um, and it's not necessarily going to be sequential, I'm just going to do them as I'm working on different things and we'll see, kind of see how it goes, see what, see what works, <laughs> really. Um, but the idea is really just to try to encourage you to, to have a go with things and don't be afraid. I'll show you what I do, but I've been doing, so I've been doing art a long time, so... Um, I'm putting out some here, I'm putting out some um, perylene maroon as well. I'm also putting out a Windsor violet. Um, yellows, some strong, strong yellows and greens in the base of, in the base of the flower there. So I'm going to use some aurelin, which I used before. By the way, the blue I put out was a, a French ultramarine. So I'm going to use some aurelin again, which is a it does depend on the make that you get, but this one, this one is a rowney one actually, and it's quite a greeny. I'm not sure if you can see that actually in the camera shot. I couldn't find a way to get absolutely everything in unless I get another table. Um, so I've got here, there's the Aurelian. looks a kind of muddy colour, but it's wonderful. It's so sympathetic to doing anything like natural from natural environment like plants. And I'm also going to use... Um, I used a bit of Viridian yesterday to create my greens. It was kind of semi-successful. Um, I think I might try a bit of hooker's green today. I'll try that over there. Um, but I'm always, I always like to mix my greens as well with, with the blue and yellow mixture to kind of... It, it really helps to tie things in together in an artwork if you use a colour not only for one part of a plant or part of a person or part of a landscape or whatever, but you also use it in another area as well and it helps to kind of create a sense of the thing being a kind of complete whole rather than artificial areas of paint that don't connect together in any way visually. Okay, so um, what I did yesterday, um, I don't use any pencils when I'm starting watercolour painting, generally speaking. You're left with a pencil line you can't rub out, but obviously if you're a total beginner, then do whatever you need to do to, to kind of map out um, the beginnings of the picture. Now, the, <laughs> being a day lily, I guess they just die off after a day. So the one I painted yesterday has completely died off down there. Um, but I'm going to come back later on and probably do a bit of that beautiful stem. Now it's visible to me and some of the leaves. But just for today and to show you and include you in this, I'm going to start on one of the lilies up here. I'm going to start off just by having a really careful look at it. And I'm going to mix in a kind of mid-tone for that petal colour that is the most dominant but kind of central tone, if you like. So it's not the darkest, it's not the lightest. And I'm mixing the two browns together there, the burnt umber, the burnt sienna. I'm going to mix in some of this perylene maroon. I didn't use it yesterday, but it's, I'm starting off at a brighter, a brighter time of day, and that's really beautiful. 
Now don't worry about being the exact colour because within those petals I can see many, many variations of those tones. And the tonal relationship that you get in the painting is actually what will give it the sense of three-dimensionality much more than just the colours, but it does depend on what you know what your aim is really. I'm making a study, so I'm looking to capture some detail. I'm really looking to, to study the form and the shape here. I'm going to place this, they're not here on the plant, but I'm just going to place it in an arrangement I think is going to be, um, be one of interest um, in the painting. So I'm going to start it off down here. I'm using, I'm using quite a big brush actually to start off. It's a size 8. I might go to something smaller in a minute, but I'm just going to I've got the brush loaded with paint and I'm just going to map out that petal. And what I'm doing, you can't see my face in this one. I thought it was kind of useful to see my face in terms of how I'm behaving as an artist when I create what I create. In this one, you'd have to take it from me that my eyes are spending a great deal of time on the object I'm painting, much more on the object than they are on the paper. But obviously I do need to get that to the paper. And I'm going to add in a little bit of the purple onto that. I'm not going to run the video for the whole of the painting, but I'm just going to get, get it kind of going. Hopefully get you going. Make some art. We're having the most incredible weather here. Very unusual for North Wales this time of year. Actually looks like we're on our way to a drought. And I'm actually really hot, which is such an unusual feeling here that actually curls around it actually curls around a stem but I'm just gonna pretend I can see the rest of that because I can see the very tip of it and I don't want to create another big stem right there so that is going to dry out a little bit paler and I'm gonna give that a little bit of water there just to the important thing here is I'm doing I am not assuming I know the shape of that petal at all I've got my eyes absolutely on the edge of that petal as I run the brush down there. And that's going to drift into a, a yellow colour in a minute. I'm just going to go on to the next petal, which is over here. I'm going to add in, I've got a bit of Windsor Red left over from yesterday. I'm going to add that in a bit. It's quite nice with these browns. And I'm just going to begin the other petal over here. Just a nicely loaded brush so you can really carry the stroke through. And this is where all of you people who are incredibly sensitive and are maybe sometimes told you're too sensitive, this is where it counts. One of the many places it counts actually, but this is where it really can count because it's that sensitivity now that can create beauty by really observing with closeness and being sensitive in response to that beauty right now. That's immediately overlapped there by another petal that is a great deal darker because it's in shadow on the underside. I'm just going to let that dry out there a little bit and not fill that in for a minute, but actually the paint is drying so quickly today, it's, <laughs> it's really unusual. This time I'm going to add in a little bit of the Windsor Violet. It's amazing the colour that this is, it's kind of in between so many different colours really, it's almost I can't describe it very simply, and this time I'm going to be a bit anti-artwork and go that way. Concentrating just on shape, mostly. And you're just looking for the simplicity, really, at this moment, but you're not simplifying the edge of the petal, you're not simplifying the shape, but you are simplifying the tone, just to begin with, because in the other videos I was talking about these different techniques, wet in wet and so on, wet on dry. One of them was layering, that's painting a layer on top of already dry paint, which is the way to build tone with watercolour painting. You kind of have to do it like that, really, because it's so transparent. And I was able to paint very quickly in layers yesterday because the paint was drying so fast. Usually you might have to wait some time. And the colder the weather, the damper the weather, the longer you're going to have to wait <laughs> to paint those layers. Okay, so that's a very sun-filled, slightly paler version there. Right, now I'm going to come on to back onto this side and I'm going to darken this up, create a greater intensity by thickening that colour to begin with, and then I'm going to add in now some of that blue. Gosh, it almost looks like that's a green. I can't, I can't tell in this bright sunlight what the colours are. I put it over here. 
Okay, I'm going to add in the green and the separate uh, blue, so rather. Ultramarine down here, as I say, blue and brown creates a great tonal shadow of itself. So, but I don't want it to go into grey, it is still brown, so I'm going to add that. It's a way of this time darkening, darkening that. It's like a burnt calming colour, really, I suppose, by adding blue, not black. Uh -uh. No, sorry, no black here. I'm not using the black. So this is the dark area. Now that bit's still a little bit wet. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to leave a slight gap in between. I want to crack on painting before I melt. <laughs> Artist melts on camera. Oh no. And you see that's a darker version. And I've left a tiny little gap in between there, which I'll come back to with a slightly lighter tone. What that is dried out so they don't merge into each other. Now, sometimes it's lovely to do those wet and wet techniques to create beautiful loose blossoms and that's another video. Do you like these videos? There's a lot of technical stuff out there um, but I kind of think you know when I'm underway with an artwork it's just really quite nice to share it with you. I'm going to use a much smaller brush now. What have I got here? Will we go down to that? What's that size? That looks like a three. Yeah, let's try that. I end up holding a load of a clutch of different brushes. Okay. You know, I'm so in love with this lily. <laughs> and I'm so glad it's come out. My neighbour gave it to me very kindly last year and it's gotten bigger this year. And despite all the wind and storms and dry temperatures, it's just blossoming like it doesn't care. I love its spirit. The spirit of a day lily, and actually it's got all sorts of symbolic meaning apparently in other cultures. I didn't know, I was having a little look last night, so I don't know much about this flower. Didn't grow up with it. I wasn't even sure of the name, but I seem to have heard my mother say it sometime. Anyway. So I'm taking that area even drying out on the palette, adding water in, but watching that density of the paint so I don't kind of change the tone too much in between these different areas. Okay. Even the grasshoppers, they all came out early. Just one week, they're like, yay, it's hot. Let's get out our legs and make that amazing summer sound. I love it. Also, we've got a garden full of toads, but they seem to be lying low now it's gone dry. <laughs> all things. Okay. Now, I'm going to bring in a bit more of that maroon. Ah, love that. Yeah, but actually, not too, too strong at one time. I'm going to. I've got these sharp shadows appearing because of the sunshine. Of course, even with your painting. There's no clouds today at all. Um, but if you're painting outside for an hour or so, of course the sun is moving and your shadows are going to change. And if you keep changing your shadows, you'll end up with a big murky shadow thing. <laughs> so you have to kind of accept that as you go along, there are changes and it's okay because, you know, what is this about creating a photograph or creating... I just really want to study these shapes and these beautiful colours and this might lead me you know, into some work for my next uh, installations. I've got an exhibition in the autumn and a little sculptural work going on in there, but I've started to incorporate some ideas from these more minuscule studies into some larger work. Not sure what that bird is over there. Come and do some painting, birdie. No thanks. Okay. I love the birds here. I had the skylark singing earlier and it's just so peaceful and lovely. Okay, so this one's coming down. That's getting a little bit more red down there. It's really the sunshine's hitting it, it's vibrant.
So I'm really drawing, drawing with the paint here, drawing with the colour. I'm going to make that a little bit darker there on the side. Actually, when you look closely at these, they've got the most... Well, I think it's the underside, actually. It's just curling up slightly. It's like pale yellow underside curls at the edges, so add in some, some of that later on. But it's, it's a question of having the patience to build it up in stages, and, well, this is the way that I do it. Each artist might have their own, their own way. Now, I've got another petal here, and that's coming out quite strongly there. What I'm just going to do before I move on to that, I've got a little bit of kitchen towel there. And I'm going to lift off an area here because what we've got in the middle of each one of those petals is, I'm not sure what to call it actually, I think I've forgotten all my botany. I really didn't have much botany in the first place, I don't know. Um, but there's a, a line at the centre of each of these petals which is actually, well it depends which one you're on, either it looks very, very pale green or pale yellow. Uh, so I'm actually just going to take that off lift that off so it just looks a little bit paler when that's dry i will probably add in a little bit of that yellow tone i've also got it happening you can't quite see it over in that one you can see it up here i'll come back and take that off just brush it out gently so lifting off lift off the paintwork lift off Now, obviously, if you're painting and you're thinking as you go along, oh, uh, mistake. I don't really think there are mistakes in painting. I just think, well, it's obviously a bit different with, with watercolour painting because you, you don't paint over the top of something and like you can with acrylic, you just paint over it. It's made it invisible Even with oils. You can't do that with watercolour, so people get a bit scared of it. But what you can do is you can do a little bit of lifting off and then you can darken things and accept and apply you know, if you've put something, positioned something slightly wrong, I actually have positioned something slightly wrong here, but I'm not going to fuss too much about it, I'm not worried about it. I'm just going to take this petal over here. I'm going to connect that one through now. Don't let anything take away your joy. <laughs> Don't let anyone take away your joy. You're painting, most of all yourself, you know. I'm very good at being self-critical. But, you know, I always used to say to my students, and you've got to say it to yourself as well, okay, that's an accident, it's a happy accident, or, okay, I've, I've not put that where I really wanted it to be because it's not really true to what I've got in front of me, so how can I... How can I work with what I've done, you know? And this is, this is intelligence, you know? How can I work with what I've done? And this isn't about entering some sort of botanical art competition or anything else, any kind of competition. This is, well, for me, this is about really exploring the beauty of this fabulous flower and hopefully and perhaps going on with it to create something that will be it's a source of pleasure or joy for other people perhaps or at the very least I'm learning something here I'm learning something about not about this amazing piece of nature but also how I might render it what I often find, what I find is a, a, an artist who works prim, you know, primarily perhaps in areas of you know, larger scale sculpture and installation is the, it's these kind of small studies and experiences that while I'm doing them, other ideas come to me, things, things come to me. And you put, your, you put your brain in that space where you're thinking, but you're thinking in a way that's quite different from the kind of conscious thought of sitting and going, I am thinking, you know, which for me doesn't necessarily result in great solutions, but it's when I'm engaged in something like this and I let my fingers and my eyes do so much of the thought that actually many, many other things can come to me creatively 
but for some of you, maybe in other areas, and it's 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 like sort of mindfulness, I suppose, in the sense that you are allowing your mind to open up to other things by being very much engaged, but living in the moment. Right, I'm going to add in some. yellows down there. I'm going to add in a little bit of that maroon. Wow. If I ran the whole video it would go on for three hours which would be wouldn't really work. So I'm not going to do the whole of this flower for you but I'm going to start it off. in some of that beautiful aureole in colour now, take that down there. Remember, so you can lift that off, you lift it off if you've got too much paint there, it's puddling. Lift it off, you even blend it there a little bit. And then I'm going to find that, you know, I'm just going to find that viridian again there. Apologies if you can't see the whole paint palette. I know it's kind of nice to see everything that's visible, but... I mean, to have everything visible, rather. So I'm just going to blend that in a little bit with the green there into the yellow. That's still kind of wet in wet. And I'm also going to add in a little bit of that, that red tone to the green which is, I think I mentioned that earlier in a watercolour, if you add the red into the green, they're complementary colours, you get a nice darker version of the green, blends well with the painting, and it's a more natural way of getting that darker colour rather than adding something that looks a little bit artificial, like a black, or just another tone of a darker green or something like that. This is so adding that red into the black there, red into the green rather. In the process, I'm not going to do all of this flower as I said, otherwise, you know, the video will run on very, very long. And what I am going to do, however, is I'm going to show you a little bit of the layering within the petal to um, obviously you can apply these techniques to pretty much anything. Um, but I'm going to have a go now with my tiny brush, my teeny tiny brush, not as tiny as the one, but this is where you know, having those small, small brushes is quite handy. And here I've got this underside of the petals. I'm actually going to go over that again and make that even darker, but I'm going to let be the areas that I see are a bit lighter now. I'm just not going to go over those so it will naturally appear as a highlighted area. And really, the variation of tone in these petals, I really love it. It goes from a very light colour right through to extremely dark and I think you know personally that's my choice in painting flowers is I like that range that you tend to notice I like to paint the darker the darker flowers because they have more of a, a range of colours and when you having said that I've got a painting with some white chrysanthemums and <laughs> yeah so it's not just that painting white flowers shall I do a video about that that's quite challenging Anything, anything white. Okay. As I go into this, I can carry on and also lift areas off here with the colour uh, and then add in there. I'm going to make that a little, lighten that down a little bit. Just working a clean brush. I say clean brush, let's get rid of that water now. And put some fresh water. I do not like the paint to get too muddy looking, even if we're painting brown. I've got another pot of water right there. That's a good tip too. See, I didn't have to get up. I stay in the zone. The thing is, if I go back in the house, it's just good to keep the same position. 
Excellent meditation. You don't want to break it, really. Uh, let me just add in some of that. Oh, I love that maroon so much. I love it, I love it. Wow. Let me see if I put it that in there. I'm actually going to, on that little area at the end there that I just left for a paler tone, I'm going to put in a bit of this now. Where that yellow is dried out, and I'm coming back to the yellows, that clean water is like doubly important. I'm going to come back again with that and add a bit more down here. Keep your colours vibrant. So. I'm going to switch the camera off in a minute and carry on painting. Probably put a picture up of the finished result. If I haven't melted into a puddle, that is. <laughs> but um, I hope you've enjoyed watching it. Thank you for watching it. If there's anything in what I've said that you feel like, oh, I could do with a bit more help on this or that, or could you make a video about this or that, then please do contact me. You can direct message me on Instagram. I'm Ellie Atchison on Mastery. And you can leave your comments in the box below. You can only do that if you're subscribed into email though, so you have to be that. But I'd love to hear from you. I wel welcome your comments. And I hope this video has been helpful, enjoyable to watch. Even if you're not interested in art, perhaps to see something coming together is quite nice. It's a beautiful day if you get the chance to paint inside, outside, night or day. Please feel free, enjoy yourself. And the key thing with this, observe, observe, observe. Thanks very much for watching. Have a great day.